Microsoft is a very old company actually like 1998 it was an open source then slowly they have kept it uh, what I can say is paid one and this is quite uh, like slowly they enter into market they grab the market and in 2017 or 18 17 of course Salesforce has acquired in this company okay and once Salesforce has acquired this company this got like a big brand of Salesforce because Salesforce already has a very good market right we all know at least you people have heard about Salesforce so sales but Salesforce didn't touch the management and anything here so they have given the name so already they are on top like they are quite boom on Microsoft was like it was a good market but when Salesforce has added the name they have easily convinced their client to use the Microsoft as an integration and Salesforce was already a CRM tool okay so name may be little new for you guys but slowly you will get to know okay so just quick introduction of Microsoft so usually people want to know like what is the prerequisite to learn Microsoft okay so don't do we need to like java.net etc some people are like from QA or Linux background okay so these are frequently asked questions what people are asking so what I can say is if you know kind of any programming language it's good it's better but it's not the mandatory part like you need you need to know about java or .NET, okay because there is no coding but of course you need to try to understand the things properly that is different thing can i learn mulesoft if you are from different background of course yes you can learn what is the best ctc that i can ask so definitely mulesoft has very much demand in the market so compared to other technology you will get good packages and you can this answer is quite subjective so just check with your friend who are already working on Microsoft you can search in the Google so that will answer you like you will get more confidence so but of course you will get good CTC I can say what should we learn and best to know before starting the session like you need to work hard you need to do practice you can join Microsoft blogs you can read training official training detail nothing there no shortcut you need to learn it properly okay so what is Microsoft? Does anybody have idea about what is Microsoft? Okay, no problem. So we know, right? I already told you it's a Salesforce company now, and it's an integration platform, of course, because this is a integration technology, and they have provided API management platform. How you can manage your API? So what they are giving you like they are providing you entire thing they are providing you design they are providing you development they are providing deployment and reusability security everything they are providing okay. basically Microsoft is nothing they, you know, it's the runtime engine of any platform any point platform this is basically they have developed on top of Java which can quickly connect to the system okay Whatever kind of system you want, it could be that like two SFTP system, one is REST, one is so call. So just connecting two system, you can understand. It is. I have taken the name like API management platform. What is API management platform mean? So it is just for designing your API, develop APIs, deploy API, manage, secure, and reuse. Okay. We we'll learn in detail. What is an API? So basically nothing if you will just uh, see the name of this one full form of the API that is application programming interface. What it does exactly? It allows communicate or exchange data between two systems. Okay. So let's suppose this is a client. Okay. This is a server. So client will send the request. Server will send the response. Okay. Let's take a real time example like restaurant example. Okay, how your API is just trying to relevant means making some similarity so you can understand easily. 
what is the waiter role actually like it will take request from client that's it then it will go to kitchen okay process request and what a response from server so you can just understand like your client is nothing your the customer at restaurant and your server is nothing your kitchen okay so actually your api will not perform any kind of operations or request so it's all about the client and server but it can process the request so what it will give order to chef and they will make it your food they will prepare so your server will actually provide the response api job is to take response from server what is kind of waiter role you can see he will collect the order from restaurant and he will serve it to back to client so this is you can understand this is how your api works so Till here, you have any questions? Just let me know. No, you clear. Okay, so I'm taking no. And if you have any question, you just ask me in between. I will never mind. Okay, don't wait for end like at the end of the session. Many times people miss the session. What are web services actually? So what I can say, like every web service is an API, but every API is not a web service. So web service is kind of, so API is nothing kind of evolution of web services. Web services are old uh, pattern things, which has a lot of protocols and all. They will follow web services and they are very is format is specific, but APIs are not, okay? So of course, every web service is an API, but every api is not but it may or may not follow all the rules or guidelines of the web service you can understand like this like you can understand soap versus rest services so soap api is largely based on http and xml okay and rest is nothing a architectural style which can support anything like http json xml okay soap web service must be in the uh, request and response in the XML format, but here in the REST service, it can be any format. SOAP uses Vistal and this uses RAML, okay? SOAP is a little complex to understand, but REST is like very much definitely. So now we'll see some, a little idea about it. So you might add in the name like this time, each language is using the microservices design pattern, okay? Uh, based on your uh, background, I, I'm not sure how much you heard about the design pattern, but design pattern are the things you can understand, like it's a way of designing, okay? Like how you are designing your application, it's kind of style, okay? So API-led architecture also based on the microservices design pattern, they, Mills have provided an architectural style called API led connectivity. Okay, so here what they are claiming, they are saying split your API into three parts make your experience API, make the process APIs, and system APIs. Okay, so what system APIs does it is just for connecting the data. Okay, so API which connect database, Salesforce. SAP system, Hadoop system, you can see here in our diagram, right? This one, it is connecting to the system, okay? Same process API. It will, what it will do, it will just combine either two or more system, or it can do like kind of, some kind of orchestration, business rules, it is deriving, so we can use good thing is we are exposing only the experience api to our customer not the process or system apis okay what are experience apis so these apis are kind of wrapper of process or system api so that client or consumer can use it okay So we are doing these kind of things, okay? So for now, you just keep in mind 
experience api or those api which we are exposing it to customer okay and process and system apis are just for internal purposes kind of the way how you are implementing but they should never be used as public apis just taking in kind of like flight examples so what type of api we can create flight database customer api we need which can maintain in the crm system notification can be there in the gmail and whatsapp server and payment api so that can connect to visa server so these all apis can be your system apis okay. same like process payment rebook flight status and notification so you can see here how these apis are reusing okay so your one process api is calling these three system api flight api customer api payment api rebook flight status process api it is also using this flight api so this kind of reusability you can see flight api is flight system api is used by process payment process api and prebook flight status also so this is when you put out kind of reusability of the apis similarly like book flight offers to customer itinerary status so itinerary status is nothing uh, you probably heard about the pnr status for train so in the same way like flight and they have kind of itinerary status okay which can be this one so same way process api also can be reused you can see like offers are also using the pre book flight status and this itinerary status are also using this so this kind of way so i just give some brief introduction but i could understand like this might be little like you are not able to absorb that and based on your background but Fine. So what any point platform does, it provided you design center to design and develop APIs, any point exchange, place where we will be able to store, discover API, reusable API manager will help you to apply the policy, the runtime manager where you can deploy the applications, access manager is nothing, you can use this kind of like providing the roles kind of so that is for admin purpose visualer and monitoring is this one just to your graphical view of the request this one hello secret manager is just to place your store like key password like this okay so are we good till here yes yes Vijay. Okay. Same you can go for help .com, in point platform account you need to create. So these are the things where so let me show you the course content part we will cover as part of this course. Okay. So this course is divided into the 12 module. Okay. This we are going to learn over here. So this is the specific to like first APL connectivity, which we have seen some of the part and of course, like we'll see more in detail in coming classes. Designing APIs, building APIs, deploying, managing APIs, modifying mule messages, structure, mule application, consuming web services, handling errors, controlling message flow, writing data with transformation, connecting to additional resource, processing records. So this kind of this is our course content. What are the required software? You should be ready. You should be download any point studio any point platform account postman salesforce developer account and java maven and you should ready with these softwares so slowly we will like this any point studio is mandatory any point studio and platform as part of mule but these are the additional things which are required like this is good like extra knowledge purpose and this will be help you to manage these applications okay so you can just google download the any point studio zip file you can download it and it will look like this when you will start the exe it will look like this so we can create the project okay 
so so this is called as a project explorer this is api kit console this is a console kind of thing okay and this is called mule palette so i will create a simple hello world project for the first day for you guys okay so you just try to understand how easy it looks like this is the account any point platform i have the account so i'm logging otherwise you can do the sign up okay like sign up kind of thing this kind of page will come and you can just use this create a account i already have a account so this is your what i have shown you in the ppd like design center looks like this here is the way we can design our apis in the raml format just see this i'm not developing here just showing you like this So generally, what your API required, a endpoint and method, get post or whatever. Okay. So these are the minimum things which required, and maximum it could be anything. Okay. So exchange here, I'm just showing you some UI level. Okay. So you can see here. These are the assets which we are creating. So something are provided by Mulesoft and something are provided by us. Okay. So if we are providing as per our organization, it will show like this. So it has the filter option. Data graph are newly introduced recently. I need to explore this first. Access management. This is just for admin purpose to provide role and all. API manager. Here we are providing kind of policies. Okay. Like if we are logging in any application we need kind of client id secret or username password this kind of thing okay so that should be fine api manager runtime manager here we are we will be deploying our applications okay and the runtime manager So I'm just showing you only like how it looks like and you don't need to manage any additional server or tomcat anything. So this is called flow we will use. HTTP listener is used for listening your request. Transform message just to set payload or kind of okay. Logger is just used for the tracking, keep track of your application in the console. So I'm just creating a very simple example. So let's suppose I'm writing like request. A logger is basically used only for the keeping track of application okay it's not impact any of your functionality but the thing is if there is some issue just give a purpose you can see like what time request received what was the payload anything what you want to say okay 
reciting hard coded messages So if you are also doing, you can just drag your application. So I'm just showing you in the debug mode, okay? I'm just hitting the request. So you can see here, like request start this at this time, okay, and because it's there is nothing in no processing time like very so you can see still like this is milliseconds, okay, 800 milliseconds and 977 milliseconds was the difference, so 177 milliseconds I took, okay, and welcome to new software like this. Yes. So now, if you have any question, you can ask. So I'm taking as a no. No, no, Vijay. Yeah. So this is for today, and I. Okay. <coughs> so we can wrap up the session for today, okay? Okay. And uh, Vijay, yeah. please, <coughs> please suggest me about uh, this mules of training is really suitable for recruiters, or how it is. Uh, so see, I heard it's that all about the coding part. So see, there is no kind of coding. So of course, it's easy to learn. Okay. Like even uh -huh. people, if you they want, they can learn coding also. But that kind of a logical, and it depends like how much you can learn. But it's a kind of the drag and drop approach, and just you need to understand the configuration kind of thing. So of course, it's suits anybody. But the thing is. You need more efforts. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The part okay. of the recruitment activity. So you never use after the college doing any kind of programming or you're not that much. Uh, I'm pretty sure you are from B.Tech background, right? No, I'm from uh, um, MBA background. Degree with and MBA. Before, okay. Before MBA, what you did? B.Sc. B.Sc. Yeah. So that should be fine. I don't think so. There is any issue. Only the thing is, you need to just. Even I know that like my previous student, she was a BCom student and no IT background, okay, from intermediate or ten. But still, yeah. she was hard and she was able to absorb that. And she is working in Accenture since last two years. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It depends on the participant interest. Okay, like if you put good effort, you can learn anything. Then, uh, no okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.